Today we will be talking a little about ZTNA connector and also the automated secure access to your private applications, the different methods that we have in Prisma Access. We live in a world where work is not just an activity, where work is an activity, but not just a place. So if you think about it, uh, like a few years ago, all of us had to like go back to branch offices and our whole networking stack was set up in data centers and the network admins had to just manage connectivity to and from the data center. But today we live in a world where applications are sprawled everywhere. It's not just in your on-prem data centers. It can be in multi-cloud environments. It can be in like your, again, distributed clouds. On top of that, also today we have users who are everywhere. You don't have like users who are just concentrated in a particular office but you can be remote, you can be in a branch or you can be traveling. So the challenge of the modern day connectivity is you need to be able to deliver high performance, low latency and seamless connectivity to all of these users, to all of these applications that are sprawled everywhere. And another thing that we are looking at in terms of the networking trend is the rapid shift from monolithic services to your containerized services that are running on public cloud. So in fact, Gartner predicts that by 2025, more than 85% of the global organizations will be running containerized applications. So all of these, like how does it translate into challenges for our networking teams? The first challenge is the multi-cloud connectivity. So if you think about it now, if you have hundreds of VPCs for which you have to provide connectivity to, what you would have to do, the first thing would be set up these tunnels advertise routes and then manage these tunnels. So the management of tunnels introduces the second paradigm here that is your networking complexity. So if a tunnel goes down or if you have a BGP route advertisement failure or a BGP rib failure, any of these things can cause a significant downtime and also can take a long time in troubleshooting. The third problem that we wanted to solve with this distributed networks is the overlapped IP address space. So when a company acquires another company or when you have partner networks, there will be overlapping IPs. And to provide connectivity in this scenario, the networking admins will have to configure and manage NAT. This is an operational overhead. And also at times, the networking admins will not have a free IP pool to perform this NAT. To solve all of these problems, we introduce the ZTNA connector. So what is a ZTNA connector? It is a VM that you can deploy in your infrastructure. Can be on-prem, can be cloud VPC, everything supported. So once you deploy this VM, it automatically forms tunnels back into Prisma Access and uh, it automatically onboards your private apps. So we have a mechanism of auto discovery where we can go and uh, look at your network and list all the private apps you have in your network. This helps you with cataloging and visibility and once you have looked at these applications, you can choose to onboard them or you can choose not to onboard them. You can also onboard these applications manually by providing the FQDN port and protocol of these applications. In this release, we support all client initiated traffic for all ports and protocols. And the ZTNA connector can coexist with your service connection. So 90% of the traffic in an enterprise is client initiated, which can be handled by ZTNA connector. However, we do understand that there are applications, some of the legacy applications, which have more of a server to client communication or some applications like VoIP that has a port hopping. So for all of that, service connections would be our mechanism to go to. And the ZTNA connector and service connections play well together and they can coexist. The ZTNA connector extends our vision of ZTNA 2.0. We still have the best user ID, app ID and device ID. In addition, it comes with a full security suit of Prisma Access that includes your advanced URL, advanced threat prevention, your SaaS inline, your DLP protection, wildfire, and DNS security. ZTNA connector is, again, one of the connectivity methods that Prisma Access offers in addition to service connection and the new connection mechanism that is coming up called Colo Connect. So what the ZTNA connector ensures is there is least privilege access, that is, Users have access to only a focused set of application and not the entire subnet. We ensure continuous trust verification and we ensure that continuous security inspection for all your traffic. And on top of that, 
of course we follow the tenet of protecting all your data and all your apps now let's dig a bit into the use cases of ZTNA connector. The first one would be simple access to your private applications. So these private applications, as I said, can be in your data center or can be in your VPCs. So to provide connectivity to them, as I've shown in the picture, all you have to do is deploy this VM in that particular application infrastructure. And once you have deployed this particular VM, the VM automatically forms an IPsec tunnel back into Prisma Access. And all you would have to do is provide the FQDN port and protocol to this particular connector. The connector also takes care of automatic routing. So you do not have to do any routing on your infrastructure. All you have to ensure is that the ZTNA connector has DNS connectivity and the reachability to your application in the LAN segment. So let's say uh, the next use case for ZTNA connector is providing connectivity to applications in an IP overlap space. So if you look at this diagram, the public cloud and the MNDA data center both share a 10.100/16. So traditionally, if you have to provide connectivity, now you would have to set up NAT in one of the two data centers, and you would have to manage NAT, and you would have to advertise the NATed IPs back into Prisma Access. So as it goes, this introduces operational complexity. However, with the ZTNA connector, now it is as simple as deploying the two connectors in the application subnets, and the connectors will take care of the natting for you, or tunnel formation, and the route advertisement. All you can do is, again, just onboard the applications. In this release, we only support FQDNs, but however, in the next release, we will be, from August, we will be supporting full wildcards and IP subnets for onboarding. We also support remote networks accessing private applications. Let's say you have a branch office and you want to access applications in the data center, or if you have mobile users, again, accessing applications in the data center, you do not need any interconnect license. You can just deploy the ZTNA connectors and the ZTNA connectors would provide you that connectivity. Now let me talk a little bit about ZTNA connectors licensing. So we have a pay per user per year model based on the number of applications you want. So for up to 100 applications, we charge $15 per user per year. For up to 300 applications, it's $80. And for unlimited apps, it's $130. And the way we count an app is one FQDN is considered an application for us. And ZTNA connector is an add-on that can be availed with all of your Prisma Access editions. But also as a part of the editions, there is some uh, like ZTNA connectors and application access that we give for free. For business and business premium edition, we give two connectors and one app. For ZTNA and enterprise editions, we give 10 apps and two connectors. So as I mentioned, ZTNA connector is just one of the connectivity method what we have the other one of course is our service connections for all of your legacy applications you can use the service connection be it your smbs wipe and with ztna connector and service connection we will be able to solve 100 percent of your private app use case and we are prisma access is the only vendor who can solve complete 100 percent of your private app use case today So how, uh, again, like, because we have like different connectivity methods, the question that naturally arises is how do I choose the right connectivity method for my use case? So if you were, if your primary connection method is FQDN or in future even IP, and you're dealing mostly with client initiated traffic, then ZTNA connector would be your mechanism to go to. And the advantages that offers is automated tunnel, no routing, automated application discovery, and like out of box support for overlap networks. And also uh, the ZTNA connector provides you an auto scaling capability. So let's say like uh, if you have like cloud native deployments like AWS, GCP and or Azure, you can just deploy our auto scale groups and the ZTNA connector can auto scale up to 10 gig bandwidth per data center. And uh, like now if, if you, let's say you have some legacy apps like VoIP, as I mentioned before, then you can use the service connection or if you want to have like user ID redistribution, then again, service connection would be your right solution. And the service connection scale per region is one gig to five gigs. 
and now let's say if you have like really high bandwidth use case like if you want 20 plus if you want up to 20 gig bandwidth and if you have like high volume of traffic going out of your data center into your colo infrastructure you can leverage our colo connect and we can support bandwidth up to 20 gigs per pa compute location using colo connect and this uh, again leverages some of the equinox infrastructure and uh, again colo connect will be released this may so now we can do a ztna connector end-to-end -end packet walk so here we will be giving you an insight of how ZTNA connector works internally, how the packet flows, what happens, and then we can also do a quick demo of the ZTNA connector. Now I'll be handing it over to Richard Gallagher to do the packet flow and the demo. Thanks, Vitra. Yeah, hi, so I'm Richard Gallagher. I'm Senior Technical Marketing Engineer for, um, for ZTNA connector. So first we're gonna, um, do a kind of end-to-end -end packet walk uh, of the solution and then we're going to go through the UI and just show you how uh, how you would onboard a connector or an application. So uh, in this diagram here on the right hand side is where we have our data center. So we have two applications on the right hand side. We have um, this application one here and application two here. So they have an FQDN and a port number to so app1.customer.com and app2.customer.com. And you know, they live in within a network. There is some enterprise DNS here for DNS resolution. And then we're deploying two connectors here and here in a connector group in front of these applications to um, provide connectivity to the rest of Prisma access to these applications. So we have two connectors in the group for, uh, for redundancy and also to provide additional throughput to these applications. Um, so these, these apps have a uh, their own um, private IP address 10.10.0.100 10, and 10.10.0.110. 10, uh, and then these two connectors are in the same subnet as the applications. So their LAN ports of the connectors are in the same subnet, the 10.10.0.0 10, slash 24 range. And then the connectors also have a WAN interface, which um, provides the connectivity to Prisma Access. So we use this WAN interface to, to build the tunnel to Prisma Access. Um, there are both two-armed and one-armed deployment models supported. So um, for any of the cloud deployments, we can support a one-armed model as well, where you have the same interface for your uh, application and WAN uh, termination. Um, so these two connectors, they are deployed you know, within the uh, application subnet. And then Prisma Access um, onboards these connectors uh, to the service. So it will uh, take the connector once it's called home to the controller and then fully configure the uh, the appliance, the virtual appliance. So this includes any interface configurations. It includes any IPsec configuration for the tunnel between Prisma Access and the ZTA connector, any uh, NAT configurations that need to be done, any policy configurations that need to be done. These will all be done automatically by Prisma Access. And we'll also spin up the ZTT, which is the ZTNA term uh, tunnel terminator uh, within Prisma Access, which is the other end of the IPsec tunnel that the, uh, the appliance within your data center connects to um, in Prisma Access. So now if we look at the kind of end-to-end -end flow. So on the left-hand side here, we have a mobile user. Um, he, uh, he's connected to the, to the mobile user gateway. Just one other thing to add is we have this concept of um, application pools and connector pools. So these pools are used to route traffic across the Prisma Access backbone, and it allows us to, um, to hide the end uh, application's IP address when we're using an FQDN application, which gives us the overlapping address support. So the, um, the connectors are given an IP address blocks out of this connector pool, and the applications are given uh, IP addresses from this application pool. So uh, when the mobile user uh, who's connected to the mobile user gateway here does a DNS lookup for the app1.customer.com, um, because this application has been onboarded to a ZTNA connector, it's not given the 10.10.0.100 IP address, which is the real IP address of the application. Instead, it's given an IP address from the application block here uh, instead. So there's a 
DNS proxy service within the mobile user gateway that um, that answers the DNS response from the, the GP user and gives them this application block, IP address. So you can see here, there's two DNS proxy entries, one for each of the applications from this application block. So 10, oh sorry, 100.64.0.100 for app one and 0.101 for app two. So any client that does a lookup for either of these two onboarded applications will get these unique IP addresses from the application pool. And then in order to load share the traffic between the two connectors that we have here, uh, there's some DNAT entries created in the mobile user gateway that um, DNAT between the application IP that was provided and the fabric IP or connector pool IPs um, that were given to each connector block. So app one, for example, is DNATed to 64.1.2 and 64.1.34, which falls within uh, an IP address in each of the ranges that these two connectors have. So traffic is denatted on the MU gateway. It goes across the Prisma Access backbone to the, the ZTT uh, or the tunnel terminator, which is connected to the ZTA connector. It's sent down the tunnel to the connector. Um, then when the traffic gets to the connector, we have some NAT configurations on the connector. So anything that comes to its local um, fabric IP address. So in this case, 1.2, we know that 1.2 maps to app one. Um, so we're going to do a DNAP for the any traffic that's destined to 1.2 to uh, the real IP of the application, which is 10.10.0.100. And then also, we're going to do a source NAT for any of the traffic um, from the mobile users or the remote network users to the LAN IP of the connector. So that way, within this segment here, we don't have to worry about any routing back to the mobile user's IP address because we're source NATing all of their traffic and overloading the uh, IP address on the uh, connector's LAN interface. Okay, so now we're just going to uh, kind of walk through the UI and um, look at what the configuration looks like. So this is in the um, in the Prisma Access setup. We'll just look at quickly here. One second. So there's a question in the, oh, this is loading. And there's a question that's come in. That's, does the application presentation only work for global protect clients or does it work for machines at sites with dedicated Prisma access connections? So it works for global protect clients and it also works for um, branches where there are remote networks from a you know, WAN edge device, could be a Prisma SD-WAN device, could be a next-gen firewall, could be another third-party device, as long as there's a remote network connection from that branch to, uh, to the um, Prisma Access. So under the Prisma Access settings, uh, we have these two blocks here. These are slightly different from my diagram, but the, the theory is the same. So we have an application block, and then we have a connector IP block. And then within the um, ZTNA connector settings, there's essentially three steps to onboarding uh, a connector and an application. So uh, this in step two is kind of a, a two-step process. So the first one is a connector group. So first thing we do is we create a connector group. I'm gonna call this test group. So a group is just um, a way to associate applications with connectors. So it's really just a logical bucket that just says, okay, for this group I have X number of applications and Y number of connectors. And within a connector group, um, the current, uh, currently we can support, you know, as of today's uh, recording, we can support 10 connectors in a connector group and 256 applications behind that connector group. So you can see here, this is the new group I just created, it has zero applications and zero connectors. But you can see here, I have two other groups that I've already created. They have two application targets and two connectors within each group. So uh, once a connector group is created, the next thing is to create a connector. So we onboard a connector, we're gonna give it a name, we're gonna call it SCON, and then we're gonna um, assign it to a connector group. 
So in this case, we're going to assign it to the new test group that we just created. So uh, you can see here, you know, we have the four connectors that were already onboarded. We have this new connector, TestCon. It has a fabric IP range associated with it, um, but all the rest of the fields are empty at the moment. So you can see it says pending token input is the current status. So this onboarding of the connector is kind of a two-stage process. So first of all, the connector has to be created within the, the Cloud Manage UI, and then you have to go and deploy the connector you know, where your applications are. So, uh, you know, just for a couple of examples, here we have the Azure solution template. So if you have workloads in Azure, you want to onboard some connectors within Azure, you're going to pick the solution template for Azure. So we support one armed and two armed. And then likewise for AWS, this is our marketplace listing for the, um, the ZTNA connector virtual appliance within AWS. We also support GCP, so there's a GCP marketplace listing. And then for on-premise data centers, um, you can download a, a, a OVA file for ESXi or a KVM file from the, um, the support page uh, for Palo Alto, from the Palo Alto support page, essentially. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to, uh, you know, depending on where you're deploying your connector, uh, you'll start the onboarding process. So if we're doing it through Azure, we're going to go through the workflow here. And during the onboarding, we have to input some tokens into the connector. So you can see here in this construct of the connector, we have a key and a secret. So when the connector is, uh, is deployed, this key and the secret must be input into the connector at boot time. So when the connector comes up, it talks to the cloud controller, or uh, the Prisma Access Controller, and then it, it reports back this key and this secret. And then this allows us to associate that virtual machine um, of the ZTNA connector with the appropriate Prisma Access tenant. So this allows us to stitches, stitches everything together. And then once the, uh, once the connector that you've deployed has called home, Prisma Access will take over the configuration, will check the software version, will uh, build the tunnel, will work out the closest Prisma access location based uh, geolocating the IP address and uh, and then start provisioning all the configuration. So once the tunnel is up, then we can onboard some applications. So in order to add an application, we have to give it a name. So I'm going to be creative and call it a test app. And we have to specify the connector group that this application sits behind. So in this case, it's going to be the test group. So it's going to be and in this case, it's going to have a FQDN of test. test.com. And it's going to be on port 80. And it's going to be a TCP application. So once we've input these criteria, then the application has been created. So you can see now has the name, the connector group, the FQDN, and the protocol, and whether it's enabled or not. And so here you can see the status is down. So the uh, the application configuration gets pushed to the connector or to the connectors that are in the associated connector group. And then each of the connectors um, interrogates the application locally, uh, A, to see whether it can resolve the FQDN of the application on the connector so that we can get the real IP address of the application. And B, it will uh, generate probes towards the application. So for this, te this test app here, we're going to be uh, you know, opening a TCP socket to port 80 uh, for TCP to see if the application is listening on that port. And that way we can determine from each connector whether the um, status of the application is up or not. Uh, and then if we were to have um, CI integration as well, it allows you to pull in applications from CIE. So if you have um, Azure AD or Okta configured with your CIE, we can pull in your enterprise applications from uh, CIE as well. And then just to finish off, uh, we have the ZTNA connector fully integrated into our insights. So under ZTNA connector in insights, you can see the uh, status of all your connector groups, your connectors and your application targets. So we can see here for these two previously configured connector groups, everything is green, the status is up, two connectors in each and two targets in each. And then this new one that we just created here, we can see the test group, the status is down. And if we now you know, drill into the connectors, 
we can see each of the connectors here. We can see the status of the connectors, and then we can see the application targets uh, or the number of application targets that are associated with each connector. And then finally, if we go and look at each of the application targets themselves, we can see here each of the application names. We can see whether the application is up. We can see the FQDN of the application. We can see its um, fabric IP, which is from the application block protocol, et cetera. And if we just drill into one of these now, we can see uh, this you know, web, AWS web server here. We can see the status is up, FQDN. We can see the connector group that is associated with, and then we can see the individual connectors that are serving this application. You can see the Prisma access location it's connected to, and then the tunnel status and the controller connectivity from the connector to the uh, Prisma access. And it's also possible to see bandwidth on a per application basis. Uh, nothing to see here right now. I don't have any traffic running, but you can see a per application uh, bandwidth. And you can also see um, metrics for each of the connectors as well, to show the bandwidth in and out of the connector and memory usage and CPU usage, et cetera. So that's all I had for the demo. And um, there's a few questions we can answer.